Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Cardigan Show. I wrote a book about two years ago, and since no one read it, and I don't have any better ideas, I thought I'd read it out loud to a friend of mine. That's me! Yeah, this is gonna be a silent reading, so please, no uh, peanut gallery comments, Boo. so the audience gets a full feel of the novel. I mean, yay! <laughs> now here's the synopsis. Mineta's past. Arthur McNair climbed to the top of society with his world-changing invention, the memory chip. This device, implanted above the user's right ear, can erase any memory or group of memories. The chip gave the world a chance to forget their problems and pain, and the world bought it. After many years of successfully leading the company as a CEO, Arthur found himself faced with divorce papers from his wife and a lawsuit from his partner. On the eve of the court trial that would decide the fate of his company, Arthur was mugged, his memory chip hacked, and the last 20 years of his memory erased. Risking his life and sanity, he undergoes an experimental treatment to retrieve the precious memories. Looking for clues about his enemies, his wife dealings, and his company's past, Arthur might not like what he finds. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's really good. Yeah, it gives you a little tingle. That's, yeah, I felt that. <laughs> Moneta's Past by William Nix. Narrated by William Nix. Directed by William <laughs> Chapter 1. Arthur turned from his wife and looked at the pouring rain. They both knew the small diner was about to close, but they lingered over their empty place a little longer. I'm glad the weather is finally blowing my way, Arthur said as his wife, Allie, put some cash on top of the bill. It's raining, Arthur, Allie sighed as she closed her purse. When she looked up, she saw that he had written, I still love you, in a marker on his forearm. Their eyes met for a long moment, despair written behind hers and faint hope written behind his. The wind has been against us for too long, Arthur. Alice shifted her body out of the soft, fake leather of the booth. We both need to start over. But I think it's lifting. You might be right. Arthur swung his legs outside the booth and stood up. He silently held out his arm for his wife while his right picked up the umbrella. Arm in arm, they left the small roadside diner. Out of the corner of his eye, he could see the waiter asking the last person in the restaurant to leave. The cab Alley called was waiting on the curb. I'm sure your bed at the office has missed you these last couple of nights. Her comment stung, but he could not deflect the blow. She was right. He had spent too much too much time and too many nights away from her. He didn't reply. She entered the cab. Good night, husband. She said the words deliberately, as if they would be the last time she'd uttered those specific syllables to that specific person. He made one last desperate attempt. I still love you. I'm still fighting for you. It will be over soon, and all will be better, she said. He tossed the umbrella in and shut the door. He waited as the cab drove off, the rain soaking through his clothes. The water began to smear the writing on his arm, but he, did not, but he did not attempt to find cover. The large neon sign behind him flickered off, and he was left alone on the street. It will be over soon, he muttered his wife's parting words to himself as he turned and walked towards his office a few blocks away. I know, darling, I know. The rain covered the sound of footsteps behind him. He did not shout for help as a strong arm grabbed him from behind and another, and another blow hit him square between the shoulders, throwing him to the ground. He made no struggle as his arms were pinned behind his back. A car pulled up and he was thrown headfirst into the back seat. A female voice commanded his attacker, Quick, give me his head. His head was lifted from the floor of the car and twisted to give an unobstructed access to his memory chip. How far are you going back? Someone asked from the front seat. Twenty years. Arthur felt a code being punched into the memory chip on the side of his head. An instant later, his vision was clouded by darkness and he sunk, and he sunk into unconsciousness. Time to start over again. End of chapter one. Right, right. Any first impressions on the book so far? Um, there's a lot of weather references going on in there. You like that? A lot of weather and a lot of arms. Yeah. Arms everywhere. <laughs> Arms are everywhere, man. <laughs> arms are just like, they took, hey, he took his arm. Okay, so like, that's it. Like, I mean, you got any other commentary? Like, what are you hoping for in the book? What are you hoping happens next? Well, I want to see why they want to go back 20 years. Something, obviously. You hoping dinosaurs come out of nowhere or something? Aliens get dropped That's out. the sound of thunder. Or the sound of lightning. Have you ever read that one? No. No. Um, no. See, I only read good books. And surprisingly like enough, own. that's... <laughs> I just read mine all day long. <laughs> just like, just continually, which if I did, wow, I'd make a lot of edits. Let me tell you. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, it is. Dawn gave it to me.
looks like you and Arthur both got mugged. Ah! Here's yeah. some bloopers. Mugged. <laughs> We're going to be chapter. talking about William Nix's book. Monetta's Past. Monetta's Past. Monetta's Past. Available um, on Amazon. Which is which is available on Amazon. Anything else? How uh, much is it? Eleven bucks. But you also can just get the PDF for free. You can get the PDF for free if you like. Because like. But buy the book. Support the artist. That's the important part. <laughs> I only get like and then a dollar. A of, <laughs> or, really? Yeah, I, mean, I just put it on there as cheap as I can get it. Oh, okay. It's well, only like my friends and family buying it. So like, oh. I feel like this is supposed to be the intro. Yes. Hello, my name is Don. I'm being forced to do this. You say, and my, my name is William. You should, you should actually be introducing me. Bloop. Restart. Well, like I'm gonna do Rest that. Can I just do my own introduction? Sure. Yes. Sure. I'll cut it out later. Aww. Start. I'm gonna do Restart. that at home and just be like, hey, my friend Don and I. Be like, make sure to mention friends, so just in case one of the girls out there sees it, it's just like, hey. Emma Watson's gonna be watching. Just She's just like, will you be taken? Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I can't have that meeting. <laughs> right. Alfred's much cooler. It's like, as if it's, it's a, a novel, novel idea. <gasps> oh! Oh! Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Be still the tingling on the back of my neck. Thank you. Thank you for keeping that PG.